Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are checking out what I believe are the top five best X570 motherboards. So yeah, it's another top five video. And the categories for this one include the best entry level board for the budget's about $200 on that one, the best all rounder, about a $300 budget, and then the best high end, and the budget for that one is up to $400. Of course, we'll also have the best micro ATX, though that's a pretty small category now, and then the best of the best, so a no compromise option, no budget associated with that one. Anyway, there is loads of motherboards to choose from, plenty of X570 boards, so let's go check them out and see which ones I recommend. Okay, so let's start with the cheapest options as we often do for these top five videos. And just quickly, I don't recommend spending much more than $200 on X570 board. Uh, typically the really entry level models there, not much better than a B450 board. And you are paying a bit of a price premium for them and really all you're gaining, I suppose, is PCIe 4.0, which you're not going to need for quite some time. Anyway. I have found recently that the sub $200 boards such as the MSI X570A Pro, uh, well actually just that board, that one sucked quite a bit, but also the Gigabyte X570 Gaming X, I was expecting that to be much better than it was and yeah, it turned out to be not that great. In fact, the only board worth considering here would be the ASUS Prime X570P and I have to say for $170 it really is quite a good board. Having said that, if you're willing to spend $200, then I highly recommend the Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. In terms of VRM performance, you're not really gaining much over the uh, cheaper board. So for $30 more, you're not really getting a better VRM, but you are getting uh, improved features such as wireless AC, better audio and better quality gigabyte networking. Uh, there's USB Type-C and then two extra SATA ports. Anyway, for $200 or less, these are by far your best options. And again, I recommend avoiding the MSI X570A Pro, uh, the Gaming Plus and the Gaming Edge uh, due to their poor quality VRM. Now, for those of you spending around $300, you do have half a dozen X570 options to choose from and None of them are what I would say could be considered bad, which I suppose isn't a surprise given it is a rather high price to pay for a motherboard supporting a mainstream socket. Anyway, the winner here for me is ASRock with their Tai Chi. It did quite well in our VRM thermal testing and for just $300 US it packs loads of features. Having said that, if you don't need PCIe 4.0, you may want to check out the X470 Tai Chi. It's also a very good board and right now can be had for a little over $200 US, making it exceptionally good value. As for the X570 Tai Chi though, it packs Wi-Fi 6, 3M.2 slots, and it has like a full coverage heatsink, which appeals to some, not others. It is a little inconvenient when it comes to changing drives, but it does a good job of cooling everything. So. You'll have to wait the cons and pros there. It also includes eight SATA ports. It has a really high quality audio solution, at least for integrated audio. It includes Intel Gigabit LAN. There's plenty of USB 3 ports. And it also supports BIOS flashback, which is a really handy feature. And then there's quite a few other features. I'm not going to list them all. It's also a great looking board with some nice lighting effects if you're into that sort of thing. Then finally, as a runner up, I'd go with either the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra or the ASUS ROG Strix X570F Gaming. Okay, so for those of you with around $400 to spend on an X570 motherboard, your options are limited to four choices, and the cheapest of which is the ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming X for $350, then there's the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master for $360, the MSI Meg X570 Ace Gaming, and that one comes in at $370, and then finally we have the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Hero for $360, without Wi-Fi or $380 with Wi-Fi. In my last round of VRM thermal testing, the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master really impressed. And the worst case scenario in that testing saw it match the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Hero, while it comfortably beat the options from MSI and ASRock. 
The Hero is definitely my alternative option here. Both boards are exceptional, and I feel there really is no wrong choice when going between either the Master or the Hero. But I like the Aorus Master for a few reasons. Firstly, Gigabyte has been on top of their BIOS game ever since the third gen Ryzen processors arrived, so support has been excellent. I really like how the Master features real thin heat sinks, and I very much like the new Gigabyte BIOS design. So for those reasons, I'd go with the Aorus Master, but I fully acknowledge that the Crosshair 8 Hero is just as good, so really pick whichever board you prefer the look of. Okay, so this is a bit of a silly category, but Halo products do exist, and while they do tend to be, yeah, a bit silly, I also love the Aorus Extreme. For those of you with really deep pockets, the alternatives to the Aorus Extreme would be the uh, ASUS Formula or the MSI Godlike. There's also the new, I've got it sitting over there and I've, I won't get it, the new ASRock. Uh, Aqua. So I'm going to feature that in a build soon, but I haven't used that board, so I can't really go recommending it. And I believe it is quite a limited run. So buying that board may be difficult anyway. So let's just stick to the three I've mentioned so far. Those three boards, they're all very good. Uh, they're all very feature rich, particularly the godlike. But ultimately, it is the Aorus Extreme that I'd buy if I had more money than cents. It's probably a bit harsh. They are really good boards, but still, they don't really make sense for a mainstream socket. Let's just say that. At $700 US, you'd really have to stick the upcoming Ryzen 9 3950X on it, and if you do, you'll really have a drill-worthy combo. The 16-phase Infineon Digital VRM basically doesn't need any cooling, but Gigabyte slapped on some real finned heatsinks for good measure. The back side of the board is dressed in a massive aluminium backplate, which also helps to extract heat. And on the front side, you'll be flat out fighting any PCB under all those heat spreaders. The upside to all of this is of course a cool running board, plus as a bonus it is the only passively cooled X570 motherboard on the market. The feature list just goes on and on for days, you'll get stuff like 10 gigabit LAN, ESS Sabre Hi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6, Triple M.2 slots, and well, yeah, there's just many, many more features, we won't list them all. And there's also quite a few nifty features as well, one of them would be QFlash, which allows you to update the board's BIOS without even installing a CPU. Anyway, it is a crazy overkill motherboard, but I love it all the same. Finally, we have the best Micro ATX X570 board, and the options here are extremely limited. It's either the ASRock X570M Pro 4 or the Biostar Racing X570 GT. So this is a Pretty easy win here for ASRock. The BIOSTAR board, which I do have on hand, uh, right now it features a very horrible BIOS. So it's the worst I've seen of a modern board in years. And availability also appears to be virtually non-existent. The VRM is also pretty rubbish, though the X570M Pro 4 isn't exactly amazing here either. Still, for those of you after a board supporting the M80X form factor, the ASRock X570 Pro 4 for $185 US is it. A redeeming feature of the board is the absolutely massive VRM heatsink, which weighs more than twice that of the current Intel POX cooler. As you'd expect, given the asking price, it's not exactly brimming with features, but you do get all the essentials. So there you have it, there's already plenty of X570 motherboards on offer, and there are quite a few good options. though. Most of them are a bit pricey. It's also great to see ASUS make a comeback. Their B450 and Z390 boards were not great. The B450 boards in particular were pretty horrible, but they have managed to work some magic with their X570 series. So again, that's been nice to see. ASRock and Gigabyte offer a few good hits mixed in with some not great options. Of course, we've included all the boards that we think are worth recommending in this video. And then when it comes to MSI and their X570 boards, we've sort of not really mentioned or recommended any of their boards. At the high end boards like the Godlike and the Ace, they're quite good. Uh, but yeah, their lower end boards, not so great. So a bit disappointing. They did so well with their B450 range. Their Z390 boards were good and even their X399. So yeah, they've, they've dropped the ball a bit here at the low end. So yeah, disappointing stuff, but that happens. As I've said before, there's no point fanboying any particular brand because they can vary from you know one platform to another, one chipset to another. And we've even seen that on the same chipset, they can offer some good boards and some not so good boards. So 
yeah, that's the way those things go. Anyway, I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, feel free to hit the like button if it was. And if you uh, happen to disagree with any of the picks here, then yeah, let me know about it in the comment section below. Always interested to read your thoughts. And that is going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.